So welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be going over my portfolio and how it's been doing in the first week of March of 2023. If you are new here on this channel, I am documenting my Wealth Simple Trade portfolio. I have employed a dividend growth strategy to my portfolio and I have three accounts currently. I have a personal account, an RSP, and a TFSA. If you want to follow this journey, please like and subscribe so you can stay tuned and watch these accounts grow over time. So the account currently sits at $18,873. Now, I'm going to be going through each of my holdings just to show you how they've been doing in the first few months of this year. We'll check out the personal account first. So the personal account has 613 US in it. And this is an, an account that I deposit $20 weekly into with a 1% cash back on my transactions. And if you don't know, Wellsimple has a cash program that you can deposit money into and just use it like a prepaid debit card. And you get 1% on these transactions. Now, in this account, I own $593 of Berkshire B and just $15 of VOO. And this $15 is what I get my cash back in. I get cash back as in dollars and, and free cash. And then I personally buy VOO with it. So not too much going on with here. I, I've chosen to buy Berkshire B because they don't pay a dividend and I don't want to be paying unnecessary income tax on this yet. I want to max out my TFSA and my RSP p first so that i am not dinged on taxes as you can see this portfolio is up one percent in the last month and in the last year is up ten percent actually so it's been fairly reasonable and fairly steady and, and it's not that much money so the next account i want to check out is the tfsa this is the largest account by far it has over fifteen thousand dollars in it and in the last month uh i'm, all, I'm down 58 dollars, which ends up being under one percent in the last year, I am down 8%, $1,300. But as you know, in 2022, the stock market was down, I believe, 18% or so in the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ was down even more. So being down 8% throughout the last year uh, is actually quite good. So in this account, I hold Algonquin Power, Alimentation Gustard, Bank of Nova Scotia, and you can see that some of these positions are a lot larger than others. Uh, in Bank of Nova Scotia, there's uh, over $1,000 invested. In Alimentation Gustar, there's only $325 invested. So that is something that, you know, Alimentation Gustar is an, a company that I am buying into regularly. And some and Bank of Nova Scotia is one I have just pulled back on and, and just sitting on these shares. So lots of these positions are in different stages of their life. And um, so just take that into note as you look at some of these positions. So CMR is one of the new one. If you don't know about this money market fund, I did a previous video on it. I, I'll leave a link in this description. They pay a 4% annualized dis distribution and I currently have nine shares at uh, with $450. So they pay a monthly dividend that I'm just sitting on as of right now. I uh, have Canadian Pacific Railway, Amira, Enbridge. So there are some industrials and energy uh, companies here like Fortis as well and that these are some of the larger ones in this portfolio and these are ones I don't really necessarily buy into all the time because they are pretty heavyweight in this portfolio go easy financial is one that has I've been again just sitting on these shares just seeing how they do I'm not a big fan of their their business model but that is something I have to reconsider in the future power corporation Pempina pipeline Telus the Toronto Dominion Bank and this is one I've really been entering over the last few weeks I have seven shares at six hundred dollars not too long ago I I didn't even hold this position so I'm I'm liking where I'm going with this with this holding and my largest holding here is VDY at 87 shares which is just under four thousand dollars Canadian and every week i buy twenty dollars of vdy on wednesday and twenty dollars of vdy on friday just so that i know that i'm compounding my week to week my month to month income with vdy particularly so i buy vdy twice a week i buy about one share a week and I, whenever i see possible and there's nothing in my account that i want to buy vdy is what i gravitate to it's a little bit more stable it's diversified canadian equities and um, i feel comfortable holding lots of uh, my weighting in vdy one of the things to note is that i only hold canadian companies in this tfsa portfolio now some people don't really like 
the thesis of the withholding tax is doesn't matter for these types of companies. Uh, withholding taxes are deducted off of foreign securities that aren't in uh, Canada. So if you hold an American company that pays a dividend in your TFSA, they will withhold 15% of that dividend as a tax. And one way around it is you hold that exact company in your RSP. The RSP accounts are not deducted to any tax on uh, foreign equities. So instead of holding those US stocks in my TFSA, I actually just hold them in my RSP because that is 15% less taxes I have to pay in, uh, in the long term. So let's check out that RSP account to see what I actually hold in there. So this RSP has $2,157 US in this account. And like I said, I only buy US securities in this RSP account. Yes, well, Simple does have uh, fees associated when you convert money from Canadian to USD, but I think it's very beneficial to grow these positions in USD and then reinvest the dividends in USD uh, as we receive them. So this account is down 3% in the last month, $61 in the last year. It's actually up 2%, which is really good considering that 2022 was negative. I actually started this portfolio about a quarter way through last year, so it didn't really get all of the negative returns um, that we saw in 2022. In this account, I hold uh, a bond ETF, uh, NASDAQ 100 ETF, uh, SCHD, which is a dividend equity ETF, and VOO, which is more... Uh, in between growth and value in the S&P 500. And my allocations are, I own $100, $106 of the bond ETF, uh, $300 in the QQQ high growth uh, technology ETF, $1,000 in SCHD, which is basically value, and $728 in a, in a S&P 500 index. So as you can really see, I hold uh, more of a middle uh, of the line strategy here. I own very little in bonds and very little in high growth tech and more in the middle. Lots of value in SCHD and, and S&P 500, right? I'm a little bit younger, so I don't really need to focus on any fixed income as it is. I own one share of this LQD and maybe every year I'll buy one more share until I deem uh, I need to increase my position significantly in this bond position. So again, I hold uh, all of my money in USD in this account, and I just reinvest my dividends and distributions back into these holdings right now. In the future, I'll be looking to grow these uh, positions out into more US positions, more single stock positions, but that is something that I, I wanna do in the future when I actually have a good stream of income that I can uh, diversify and deploy my money where I deem necessary. So that's it for the three accounts. I'm just gonna take a look at the dividends I've received in the last few months, and we can talk about where I really allocate all the dividends I get. Let's go check that out. Okay, so I've filtered the Wealth Simple Trade platform to just show dividends in all, from all of my accounts, US and Canadian. So on March 1st, I received $17.75 from Enbridge. I received $18.08 from Fortis on the same day. I, that CMR, that money market fund, I received a dollar thirty-four. Amira, uh, seven dollars and fifty-nine cents. And these are no, these are all in my TFSA account. Uh, VDY paid fourteen dollars and ten cents. LQD paid uh, thirty-four cents USD, and that's in the RSP account. Now, SCHD and LQD in my RSP account pay monthly dividends. VOO and QQQ pay quarterly. So the the cadence of those payments are a little bit slower compared to VDY and maybe some of the TFSA holdings because they rotate a little bit differently because there are more holdings in general. So TRP was an old holding I had, and this goes back to January 31st, they pay $2.70. Bank of Nova Scotia, like I say, they, they pay quarterly and I received almost $15. So every quarter, Bank of Nova Scotia is gonna pay me $15 or more, depending on if they raise their dividend every quarter. So that's like $60 at minimum as of right now now some of these companies may reduce their dividend cut their dividend in the future and that is why stock selection and etf selection is very important when you construct these portfolios because you want to buy companies that are less likely to cut their dividends they have reasonable cash flows they don't overpay on dividends and they're 
in a good place in their market and industry to just continue paying what they're paying and increase them maybe with inflation or CPI depending on where they are. So that's pretty much what I've received in the last few months. Um, I'm going to go to my spreadsheet chart to really see how much we've received because that'll be more interesting than just looking at the companies uh, and individual distributions. Okay, so I have summed up my dividends from 2022. In these tables, I have my TFSA, my personal and my RSP accounts. So I did track an RBC RSP and I have not included that anymore because it, it, you, the viewer, cannot see that in in the Wealth Simple update. So I will be just be doing my Wealth Simple RSP as of right now. In 2022, I received $678.79 over the course of the whole year. And just in 2023, it is currently March 3rd, just in the first two months, January and February, and part of March, I guess, because we have received some payments in March, I have received just under $170. So I think this is going very well so far this year because we're already on a better trajectory than we were all of last year. So in the first three months, in the first two months, I have received $170 in uh, dividends. Now, one of the questions is, where do you put these dividends when you receive them? And again, you can buy the same companies that you have already owned and you can distribute them pretty equally across your holdings or you can actually use your dividends for something else. Now, so one of the options with this money is I can withdraw it from these accounts and actually buy assets that are outside of the stock market to di diversify a little bit differently. Maybe eventually you can buy a property with the dividends you've received or maybe you buy collectibles Art. there's all these other assets you can buy other than stocks when you receive this payment you can diversify in other ways maybe you want to invest into a, a, a private business create a private business there's all lots, lots of scenarios where you need this money uh, not in the stock market so don't be fooled that you can't withdraw this money because you can and you can actually use it in very effective ways outside of the stock market personally as of right now i'm just reinvesting these funds back into the holdings until they grow large enough where i can withdraw some of the distributions and maybe uh, do something else with it so thanks for stopping in if you want to to see more of this content if you made it this far you probably like the video and want to see more about this so like and subscribe and stay tuned for future content and updates let me know how your account has been doing in the first few months of 2023 see you next time